Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're so thankful for all of you who are watching us on Facebook Live right now. And for those of you who will be tuning in later, we welcome you from Hillside United Methodist Church. We're here in Phoenix City on Highway 80, and we praise God for this opportunity to come in your homes, uh, on your phones, wherever you are, whenever you tune in. We welcome our, our uh, church family, our international church family, whether you're in Alabama or Georgia, the United States, Canada, Mexico, China, Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, Mongolia, United Kingdom, wherever you are, whatever time you're watching, we welcome you. We have already been praying for you this morning, and we thank you for your prayers for us. We thank God for this uh, blessing we have to be able to share the, the gospel message, a message of hope and healing and salvation, and a message that we celebrate with joy today. And um, we just want to thank you all for your giving. We have been so blessed by the, the generous gifts we've received from people all over the place in different churches and, and families and businesses. And we want you to know that those gifts are going to be used for the kingdom of God to continue this, this ministry that God has placed in our hands. And we just know that he is going to take care of all of these uh, necessary repairs. And we just thank God for that. And we will just declare that God supplies all of your needs and blesses you richly. And we're going to ask Mr. Uh, Edwards now to come and speak a blessing over our offering this morning. Dear Lord God, let us focus on Jesus, the giver of all the good things that we enjoy in life. And I just like to uh, thank you on behalf of the church to uh, continue to send those uh, testimonies in of how that uh, you saw them into this ministry and you see those impacts in your life and the blessing that lift up our heart. Lord, we're coming for you with a bow down head and an armor heart, just knowing that you are the crew and on the podium take, Lord. Lord, bless this offering. We know it came from you. And we want you to bless us with the mind and the heart to use it in your building up your kingdom to your imminent return, Lord. Bless those that had a heart to give. Bless those that would like to and could not, even as they had. Bless our going and bless our coming, Lord. We give you the glory, Father God, and your beloved Son, Christ Jesus' name. It's there and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you all for your prayers, your support, your encouraging words, your giving. We know God is using those things to not only continue what we're doing here, but we're believing that in 2021 we will see this expand and grow, not only uh, internationally, but also in our sanctuary here. And we want you to know that you are welcome. If you are able to please come and join and worship with us right here at our church at Hillside United Methodist Church, we have a place for you and a heart for you as well. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms. Chapter 103, Psalm 103, and right now we're going to focus on beginning at verse 8. Psalm 103, beginning with verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love. He will not always accuse us or be forever angry. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God this morning. Let's pray as we open our hearts to the word of God. Lord, I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light to us today. Lord, I thank you that your word brings life health, healing, and salvation to us. And I ask you, Lord, to give us ears to hear and a heart to receive. And even as I thank you for your anointing upon me and within me to deliver this message, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And I'm, my messages lately have been uh, focusing on revival because I believe that it is the time and the place for God to do mighty things. And in order for him to do those things, our hearts need to be in a state of revival and open and expecting God to do great things. And you know, we generally associate revival with a season of repentance, don't we? I mean, we think of that. You know, that's the first step in revival is prayer and repentance, turning our hearts to God. And for us to be confident in how our attempts for repentance are received from God, 
we need to develop an understanding of God and our faith in his love, his grace, and his mercy. That's why we, we can sing praises to him because we understand that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. You know, um, as we grow in the word of God and continue to um, grow in our understanding, our, our expectations just grow as our faith grows. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we thank God for the opportunity to hear the word of God today. And um, as the man blessed to be able to share this word um, with my um, growing years and, and great sage wisdom, I should be able to tell you new things, right? And um, I will tell you that I am constantly learning new things. Like just this morning, I learned that the three ninety nine crystal a hangover meal will make anybody feel good, even if you don't have a hangover. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You know that. There was no extra charge for that information today. And if you're in China, I don't know if you have crystals there, but we're praying you will have them soon. <laughs> but anyway, but as we grow and, and age, we should be growing in our ability to praise the Lord because we can look at our lives and see all the ways he cared for us, all the good things he did, even with our mistakes, even with our blunders and failures, how we fall on our face, we say, you know what, God, every time you were there for me, your mercies really are there every morning. It's so easy to praise God when we recognize his goodness and his mercy. Let's go back, if you don't mind. I, this whole Psalm 103 is such a wonderful chapter. And I, I've been told that this is one of the most quoted, if not the most quoted passage in Psalm. You would think, uh, I thought it would be Psalm 23, but they said that, this is such a powerful chapter. And it starts off, it says, My soul, this is David saying this, My soul bless the Lord, and all that is within me bless his holy name. See, it's coming from his heart, from his soul, blessing and praising God. It says, My soul bless the Lord, and do not forget all his benefits. Say benefits. Yeah. Praise God. Just as God forgets our sins, he tells us to remember his benefits. It says, He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with faithful love and compassion. He satisfies you with good things. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes acts of righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He revealed His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and abounding in faithful love. He will not always accuse us or be angry forever. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows that we are made, he knows what we are made of, it says, remembering that we are dust. That's perfect for the first su Sunday in the Lenten season. He remembers that we are dust. Just like we say on Ash Wednesday, that you come from dust and from dust you will return. It says, as for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field and when the wind passes over it, it vanishes and its place is no longer known, but from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is toward those who fear him and his righteousness toward the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all his angels of great strength who do his word, obedient to his command. Bless the Lord, all his armies, his servants who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all the places where he rules. My soul, bless the Lord. Amen. What a, what a wonderful scripture. I am so confident in 2021 in God's amazing plan for his church, for his people all over the world, what he has in store. And to get where we need to go, we've got to become more of who God wants us to become. Does that make sense? we got to grow into this plan of God. We're, we're not there yet, but we're pressing on in faith. But you know, have you ever been on a plane and had to be put into a holding pattern? And you're circling the airport. And you're waiting to land. It just gets harder and harder and more and more frustrating. And, 
I feel in some ways for the last 12 months we've been kind of on a holding pattern of where we are expecting to go with what God wants to do in our lives. And it gets frustrating. I mean, am I the only one who is tired of this? <laughs> I mean, you know, they say that the scripture says the trying of your faith worketh patience. Say patience. Patience, patience is almost a dirty word, isn't it? But patience is a virtue, right? Um, but as we grow in patience and faith, as we continue to become more and more like Christ, there's those periods of catharsis where you see things bubble up to the surface that you recognize and you say, you know what, I see things in me that need to change. You know, like you think you've got something under control and maybe you lose your temper or you say things you shouldn't say and you can't take those words back, but you can repent. <laughs> Acts three nineteen says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Times of refreshing. Say that with me. Times, times of, of refreshing. refreshing. That sounds good to me. Amen? Uh, times of refreshing. And the word says these come by way of repenting and turning our hearts to the Father. A great outpouring of God's Spirit is coming upon this land and upon this world. And for us to participate in this time of Holy Ghost revival... We start with our own turning back, our own personal revival, our own hearts. The scripture says, repent then and turn to God. You know, my, my mother was saying just the other day, she said, this great awakening is for families too. And it made sense because this awakening is not just in our churches, in our world, but it is in our families and even more personally in our individual hearts because it's like the ripples in the pond will grow as our hearts awaken to God's plan for our lives. And as our eyes are open again, we begin to see more clearly. And as we see more clearly, we see what we have, both in our nation and in our world and as Christians, but we also see the things that we so easily can lose. It's time for repentance to lead to revival. Even as we look forward in faith, we also must turn back. We turn back to our foundation of faith. The Hebrew word here for repentance says shuvah. Say shuvah. <laughs> shuvah means to return. It's pretty simple, right? To return. Type in that word return if you're watching online right now. We need to return. See, that straight and narrow path that Jesus talked about has been adjusted and expanded and stretched and bent to accommodate every lifestyle and every mood that people have to make everybody comfortable. But the fact is when you and I, we get off of that straight now, when we find ourselves off course, it's allowable, praise God, to make a course correction and get back on the right road. Praise God for that. That's the Lord's mercy. That's his grace for all of us. You know, sometimes in this modern world, things have changed, especially if you go to different parts of the country, sometimes it's different. But I'll do some kind of old-fashioned gentlemanly thing or be polite as I was brought up to be, and someone will marvel and they'll say, well, I haven't seen that in a while. Wow, that's nice. And I'll say, well, that's the way my mama brought me up. That's the way I was raised, right? I mean, we, we have traditions and we have things that we were taught as Christians that we need to go back to. Does that make sense? Yes. And, um, you know, one way we might call it is home training, right? When I was in high school, we used to say, he ain't got no home training. <laughs> When you see somebody do something, you just shake your head and say, that boy ain't got no home training, you know. But we have to grow up. You know, Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That means there's something bigger for us to aspire to. The Passion Translation says it like this. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. We repent, we return, but we also press on toward more because there is more. Say that. There, there is more. more. Anybody who doesn't understand there's not, that, that there's more needs to experience some because once you do, you want more and more. You know, it says, you know, a man that has an experience cannot be persuaded otherwise by someone with an argument. Once you have tasted the greater things of God, you don't want to go back. And returning can be a wonderful thing. Just like this word, shuva, repentance, returning. You know, when, when uh, Haley was in school and I was driving her places so many times when I'd pull in the driveway at home, I'd say, home sweet home, 
home sweet home, because I always wanted that to be in her heart, that no matter where she went, no matter how far away she went, God, that's home. Home was there. And God has a, a home for us, right? And, you know, there's a, a place to return to, to return to God. During my time in, in the military, there was a time in my military service where one day it was like I just woke up and I realized that I had gotten far away from God. The shift had been slow and subtle, but it was like all of a sudden just hit me very clearly. There had been no, no word in my life. I wasn't being fed the scripture. There was not a, a prayer time. There was a time spent in the presence of God and in a place was a, a painful emptiness. And it felt hopeless, almost an eternal kind of hopelessness, like I'd lost so much. And I wondered how I'd gotten so far off course. I wonder if any of you know what that feels like. I'm sure a lot of us have, and sometimes maybe maybe someone where you are, you're listening, and you say, that's kind of how I feel right now. But in my situation, I sought the Lord, but I also sought help from fellow airmen that I knew were fervent Christians, people that, that had demonstrated to me their faith in Jesus Christ, and I saw godliness in them. And I went to one of my brothers, and I told him my story, and I just said, you know, I need help. I need to get back close to God. You know, I need to get my life right. And and not only was he there for me, but I joined a group called Christian Military Fellowship and I started hanging out with other believers and going to church. What a novel thing, right? But I'm getting back. And fortunately, there were godly men in my life at the time that could help me. And you and I, the Bible says, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation to help people come back to God. And, um, you know, there were times, you know, when... At, during this struggle where I would think back to earlier days in my life. And I, one of the memories I have was remembering how on Sunday nights we would sing the old gospel songs in my little Baptist church. And for the first time in my adult life, I recognized that there are some things that are indeed sacred. Some things that we should keep sacred in our heart and, and hold in reverence. It's like that song, Amazing Grace, that we sang here in the church this morning that says, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Amen. See, the great awakening is not only about us awakening to our present condition, our need to change, our need to come back to God, but it is also an awakening to all the wonderful things God has already done in our lives. All the ways he's blessed us, how he's protected us, how he's cared for us, sustained us all through this journey we call our lives. And another verse from Amazing Grace says this, just grace has brought me safe this far and grace will lead me home. Amen. We're not home yet, y'all. We're on our way, amen. Yes. Some of us are closer than others, but we are on our way home, but we're not there yet. And we, we pray for a precious sister today who's her sister went to be, went, went home this past week to the kingdom of God. You know, when the Bible says, when that happens, they're not looking back. They're rejoicing in their glorified body. Amen? Amen. But for those of us who are alive and remain, it says we groan inside of these bodies. But God has resurrection power for us today. It says that same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal bodies. But Romans 2, 4 tells us that God's kindness is intended to lead us to repent, to change our mind and our inner man and to accept God's will. See, it's the love of God that leads us to repentance. Another translation says, Do the riches of his extraordinary kindness make you take him for granted and despise him? Haven't you experienced how kind and understanding he has been to you? Don't mistake his tolerance for acceptance. Do you realize that all the wealth of his extravagant kindness, listen to this, is meant to melt your heart and lead you into repentance? The Bible says, if you hear the voice of the Lord today, harden not your heart. I asked Brother Keith to come up and join me. We're going to sing a song that a lot of you know. And if you're listening or here with us in the church, you can sing along. We're just going to sing the first verse of a song called, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. And it's also called, I Surrender All. <laughs> <laughs> All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever 
love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. That's a song of repentance. We open our hearts to receive you. I pray for all those under the sound of my voice this morning. Lord, that they would hear your voice and respond to you and accept you to open their hearts to you. Jesus, you said you stand at the door of our hearts and you knock. And if we'll open our hearts to you, you'll come in and fellowship with us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for the power of repentance today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now it's our privilege to ask you to join with us as we celebrate Holy Communion again as we every do every Sunday. And um, we take the bread, we take the cup, and we invite you in your homes or wherever you are to, to take the bread and take the juice, whatever you have available, and join with us in this special time that we believe that the Lord is, as He promised, very present in this time of Holy Communion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The same way Jesus took the cup. Saying, This cup is the new covenant. Sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you drink it. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. For as often as you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. And we thank you so much wherever you are, whatever time you're listening. We thank you for worshiping with us today. Our prayer is that the word of God takes deep root in your hearts and that you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, just like the word of God says. We pray the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you, lift his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a wonderful new week. Amen.